Let's look at the deformable simulation capability in Omniverse next. So in the physics demo scenes, we're gonna go and skip down to deformables and load this deformable body demo. So what does this do? It basically creates this soft jelly-like object that bounces around and then falls down. And you can also manipulate this, you can grab it. It's kind of like a whoopee cushion, that kind of thing, except it's, uh, it's solid, it's dense, right? So um, then the next question is, how do we make something like this ourselves? And the first thing you need to create is, is create a mesh and uh, don't use, in this case, don't use any of these um, primitive shapes because one thing that's important here is that your shape should have a fair amount of subdivision in the form of having relatively small triangles because, and uh, this may not be obvious, uh, the deformable simulation is not going to subdivide any triangles for you automatically. We want you to have full control over how many triangles you have, so that means you get to pre-tessellate your geometry, and the deformable simulation is only going to bend your object along the edges of your triangles or polygons. So with that in mind, let's create a torus, and a torus is something that does have a fair amount of tessellation by default. Let's make it a bit bigger to make it better visible. So here again, if we go down to wireframe, you, you can see it's, it's fairly well subdivided. So, right, but this, uh, just creating this and uh, not having any of the default physics stuff on, you can see it doesn't even simulate, that doesn't do anything. So uh, what do we do? We do, if we can right click, we can say add physics and uh, deformable body and with that we are actually already pretty much done that's going to drop down now and uh, well you may not see it um, flex that much because this one is um, by default a little bit stiffer but you can manipulate it and you can see it's like uh, kind of like this inner tube uh, it is still modeled as a solid object you can do visualization like um, I think here under physics you can do deformable body and then let's do selected. And this is the simulation mesh that got generated. It's basically our finite element, oops, finite element mesh for the object. You can see for both of the objects, something approximating the shape has been done, but this isn't used for collisions. This is actually focusing under the, um, the little element sizes to be relatively uniform. There's a different mesh that's being used for the collisions and that is actually fitting the object exactly so that you don't have any weird collision artifacts. The way you define your softness for your body is with a deformable body material. You can create those just by doing create physics and then physics material and then select here deformable body material that makes a new one and here you can set your young's modulus which is uh, you can google this this is a um, an actual thing that's the stiffness of your material so the higher this is the the stiffer it is the units if you're using uh, meters and kilograms then this is going to be in uh, pascals it's so big because uh, typical quantities are in megapascals or gigapascals even uh, poisson ratio is also like how much it um, you know when you squeeze it how much in the other directions it's expanding um, but the, the, so any case you you can you can play around with that and then the way you assign it to your object is oftentimes just by dragging and dropping but, uh, or you can also, we can make both of them have the same material by dragging this one. And then now that you select a torus, it should actually have it assigned. Um, you can either put it here, I think, or you can just apply the material for physics here. So you would also be able to select it. Um, let's see now if the behavior changed at all. We're gonna drop them again. And yeah, that's definitely a lot softer. So that's it for the basics of deformable simulation.